Hey everybody, welcome to the Coding Zoo. If this is your first time joining, my name is Shane. This is the Coding Zoo Java playlist. In today's lesson, we're going to start learning uh, about Java streams. We're going to start a few videos uh, in a row uh, going over the different features of Java streams. Java streams are a way of processing collections of data in a functional manner using Lambdas. So if you're not familiar with that, that's definitely something that you want to know how to do in Java. And we're going to start covering uh, the different ways to use streams in the upcoming videos. So if that's something you're not familiar with, you definitely want that in your toolkit when programming in Java. So stick around and we're going to jump right in. All right, so what is a Java stream? So with Java, you know, you have different uh, collections of data. You have array list, uh, you have different types of lists, linked list, different uh, types of data. Well, those different types of data, usually you'd loop through that data and do operations on it. Well, Java streams is a new way of processing that data. It's a new way of processing that data in a functional manner. So a stream is a data structure does not, that does not store data, but rather moves data through a pipeline of operations. It's just a pipeline of a way of uh, copying or moving your data um, to a different data structure. Now you can do certain things on that data as you move it. Um, now keep in mind, it does not change your original data structure. That data structure will stay the same. It just creates a new data structure. So as that data is moved through a stream, you have what's called terminal operations and you have what's called intermediate operations. So terminal operations, they are operations that terminate the processing of the pipeline, the processing of the stream. They usually will end up collecting the data or providing some kind of result uh, with whatever you're trying to do with that stream. Now, the other operations are called intermediate operations. Now, these operations perform a process on the data and usually puts the data into another stream for a terminating operation to process. So an example of an intermediate operation would be sorting or filtering. So, and I'll go more in depth in a second on that. Now, streams are functional by nature and are used in conjunction with lambdas. Any modification to a stream such as filtering elements resorts into a new stream, which can be collected into a new data structure and the original data structure is unchanged. A stream is like an iterator. Once you navigate it, you have to create a new one to traverse the data collection again. So you can't keep reusing the same stream over and over again. You can execute operations on a set of data in parallel with a parallel stream. So that's one huge benefit of uh, streams is if you have the right use case, you can actually process a collection of data uh, in parallel using multiple threads, basically doing concurrent programming. So there's, besides the many operations that, and the ease of processing data with functional type lambdas, um, you can also do that processing in parallel streams. So that's one great feature about Java streams. So let me kind of draw it out for you. We want to actually uh, program against a stream today, but I wanted to basically draw it out, give you kind of a visual uh, representation of what I mean when I say a, a, a collection and a stream. Now keep in mind my drawing skills are somewhat limited but hopefully this uh, for you people who are more visual and auditory uh, hopefully uh, this uh, drawing will help you kind of understand uh, more about what I'm trying to say. I've got a B, a D, a C, and an A. So I've got a list. All right. My drawing has a lot to be desired. These, so I have an array list here or a list. It has the characters B, D, C, and A. And I can create a stream from this. Now a stream will not store the elements uh, in this data structure, but rather it will move them or convey them uh, to another uh, structure or procedure, etc. So let's pretend I have a stream here. So I've got a stream. Now these items are going to get inserted um, through stream in this order and again my drawing is not that great now I 
from the a list, I created a stream. Now that stream will allow me to convey or move the data to say another function. So let's do a um, for each function on the stream. Now the for each function is a terminating function. In other words, it's not an intermediate step. Um, it will take the data moving through the stream and um, process it and terminate. So the for each will take the data and it will take each element in the stream in the order that it was in the array and or list and it's going to pass it to well a function so let's say I have my function here it's going to pass each one one at a time I'm going to call it I have a say I have a function called my print All right so my print function is going to take the letter and print it out to the console so when this program is done you should have this printed on the console B, D, C, A. So I have a list or an array. I derived a stream from that, which conveys that data to another function called for each. For each takes one item at a time and passes it to a function, uh, or rather a procedure of my creation. Uh, in this case, let's say I have one that's called my print. And my print is uh, printing it out to the console and terminates. You're done. You're done with the stream. So. That is one way of using a stream and using operations that terminate. That's one way of using a stream and using operations that terminate. They are basically intermediate operations that, performed, that are performed on the data. So you have operations that are terminal and you have operations that are intermediate steps. So what would be an example of an operation that's intermediate? Well, instead of taking this array into a stream using for each, a terminal operation on it, I could take it into a stream and I can uh, do a sort function on it. So this sort is an um, intermediate step. It does not terminate. What it does, what intermediate functions do, is they create another stream. So it takes the data from the array, conveys it through the stream, passes it into sort. Sort creates another stream. And of course, in processing the original stream, it's sorted each character. So now I have a stream that has this order. Now after I do the sort, I can do again another for each operation. And pass to my print and I end up with the outcome of A, B, C, D being printed to the console. So a stream allows you to take a data structure like an array or a list, convey that data through multiple operations that can be terminating operations or they can be uh, intermediate steps. Uh, there are tons of different operations supported in the API. Some are terminal, some are intermediate. You can combine those together to manipulate the data into a different data structure or process it in a different way. So that's that's pretty much it. All right, hopefully that made sense. Um, just for your information, here are some of the um, operations that can be performed on a stream. Here's, here's a list of some we'll, we are going to cover in the upcoming lessons. So if you're still interested in learning more about streams, and if you don't know them in Java, you definitely need to know them. So um, definitely check out our upcoming videos. We're going to try to go over each one of these one at a time to help you understand how they work. We'll cover some uh, terminating operations, and we'll also cover intermediate operations. So you get to learn uh, in depth about Java streams. So I hope that helped you understand the concept of Java streams. And again, we're going to jump deeper into them in upcoming videos. I hope that you enjoyed today's lesson. Uh, if you did, please click that like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and click subscribe. Uh, your support there is much appreciated. Also, leave me a comment below. If you liked it, leave me a comment. Hey, uh, what did you like about the video? Uh, and also, if there's ways we can improve how we present this data to you, let us know. Our goal is to help you learn how to program, so we always enjoy that positive and constructive feedback. 
So definitely let us know. Um, so that's it for today. Uh, thank you for joining, and I hope you have a great week.